You'll remember we had the voice of the crisis. We spoke to companies who were having difficult times at the height of the crisis. And you remember I spoke to a Danish hair salon owner whose business had all but disappeared when Copenhagen shut down. Well, we also promised to visit these people again. Return to the voice of the crisis, as I did on a recent trip to Denmark. The urge to actually just say, do your wildest. I mean, do you dare? No. <laughs> Not too tight, don't strangle me. <laughs> I don't want you to feel uncomfortable in my chair, though. Do you want your legs up and a back massage on? Yeah. When we spoke in May of last year, yeah. the salon, you, you'd been closed for a month and it was the week after you just opened. Yeah. You were very enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> I was super happy. It was nerve-wracking to be on a lockdown for a month for us and for some people longer. Um, so when finally coming back to your clients, and even though it was a little bit of a hassle to get everyone uh, rebooked and uh, figuring out how, how do we make time for everyone, it is a pure joy to right. welcome clients again. <laughs> Back then, everything was so new that, you know, you couldn't believe that Denmark could close down. We were so safe here, so uh, it was, uh, yeah, surprising that everything, like, got very serious. So then you go through May, June, July, August, and you yeah. go through the year and things get worse in December and you have to close again. Yeah, so we suddenly have to close again. We're, we're very worried about this. And, but in the beginning, we think, OK, it's just a month. It's just until New Year. Maybe it is. Maybe we can open again. And everyone is kind of like, this is just 2020. Next year, everything's going to be better. We were living in oblivious that back then. And then it's next year, and we're still closed. And we're still closed all the way until April. So a very long period of time. How difficult was it to stay in business for the four months, even with government help? It was tough, and I think especially for smaller salons than Sins. Sins are quite a healthy company, but for smaller salons, I think it's, it has been almost impossible. I think a lot of salons have, have had to close down or change the way they do things. So you've reopened now. What's the situation now? Now we are a little bit more relaxed. The face mask has gone off. Everyone still needs a Corona pass, but everyone's gotten one already and gotten used to it. So it's way more relaxed and we are almost back to normal. How many customers do you think you lost or gained? Oh, I don't know how, how many we lost. I don't think we lost any, really. I think everyone really started to value us a little bit more. It became very popular supporting your local hairdresser and showing, you know, showing everyone that you showed up. I feel like our company has really dealt with this in the best possible way. I do a lot of our social media and I've really been happy that we had the time and we had... You, 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 you told people, come and get your color. Yeah. You did tutorials, how to cut your own hair. You, you and, and people responded. Yeah, 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 there was a great response on it. And uh, yeah, especially for the, the, the color they could uh, take home instead of going to some drugstore and get a box dye and then we have to fix it after. But trust me, we do have a lot to fix after a lo five months of lockdown uh, in the first place. So for someone to have come in with green hair, they dyed themselves or whatever, I mean, that's just tough. <laughs> just a tiny one. Yeah, it's good, isn't it?